E, merhabalar. Ben SEPTA Filtrasyon'dan Deniz Kasap. Şirketimiz meyve suyu sektörü için gıda firmalarına memran tedariği yapmaktadır. Ofisimiz Ataşehir İstanbul'da bulunuyor. E, ve şirketimiz hakkında genel bilgileri www.septafiltrasyon.com adresine girerek hem de deniz.kasap et septafiltrasyon.com adresine mail atarak öğrenebilirsiniz. Bugün PCI membranlarından Piotr Sayın Piotr Buruza ile ve Ecolab'dan Sayın Leif Natsen ile bir söyleşi gerçekleştireceğiz. Bu söyleşi de meyve suyu firmaları için membranların kullanılması, doğru kullanımı, operasyon şartlarını konuşacağız. Ayrıca membran ömrünü uzatmak için filtrelerin temizlenmesi hakkında konuşacağız. Katılımcılarımız da sessize alınmış şekilde e, olacaktır. Soru cevap kısmında Gerek sorularınızı İngilizce yönelterek, gerekse Türkçe yönelterek e, say, gerekli kişilere sorabilirsiniz. Türkçe sorduğunuz soruların İngilizceye çevrilmesi konusunda ben yardımcı olacağım. El kaldırarak bu işlemi gerçekleştirebilirsiniz. Slaytlarımız kayıt altına alınmaktadır ve bu söyleşi sonunda slaytlarımız Katılımcılarla paylaşılacaktır. Size iyi seyirler diliyorum. Sözü PCI'den Sayın Piotr Burızda'yı bırakıyorum. Piotr, it's all yours. So, um, good, good morning, on. good afternoon. Uh, my name is Piotr Burızda. I'm Business Development Director at PCI Membranes. Uh, I'm here to present uh, uh, role and behaviors of, of membranes uh, in, in just uh, application. So I would like to uh, start with a short introduction. Uh, after that, I will go through the uh, membranes role and then focus on fruit juice clarification process and ending with the systems and basic operation plus failure. So what kind of common failure we can find in juice application. A uh, few words about PCI membranes. Uh, we uh, are the part, uh, a brand of a filtration group. Uh, filtration group is a multi, uh, uh, multinational company uh, with uh, two billion revenue annually. We have 7,000 employees, 100 uh, locations, and 20 on country. We as a PCI membranes, we fit perfectly in filtration group uh, because we are making work healthier, healthier, and more productive. Uh, as PCI membranes, you can see on the right side, uh, there is uh, uh, our revenue is mainly focused in Europe. In Europe, uh, we we generate 64% of revenue. The rest is uh, Amer both Americas and uh, Asia and Pacific. Uh, basically, uh, we have uh, we are producing of polymeric membranes uh, in Poland, and and uh, and we have sales office in United Kingdom. Of course, we are working uh, through our partners. Uh, we can also sell direct, uh, but our model is to to make uh, make the, the sales channels as easier as possible for our customers. Um, so bas basically, uh, why we are here, why we are why, why we are talking about membranes? Uh, membranes are very very well established uh, technology. I would say it's more than 50 years right now in operation. In juice, we are talking about 25 years in operation. So so membranes are providing very reliable uh, production and also membranes are uh, are giving this perfect performance so with stable performance so as you can see over here we have uh, four filtration processes the most tighter process is uh, reverse osmosis which allow only to go through uh, water uh, through the semi permeable membrane uh, so it retain all all the contamination uh, the next one is nano filtration membranes uh, and nanofiltration membranes are uh, are allowing uh, uh, to pass through water and uh, monovalent salts, but sugar or anything what is larger will, will stay on the on the concentrate side. Ultrafiltration uh, membranes, which is very common in in juice industry, and they they are uh, retaining color 
uh, and also some uh, some uh, some uh, macromolecules, uh, but is allowing all dissolved all dissolved sugars and and uh, ions go through the membrane. And the last one is microfiltration membranes, which are the most open, mainly the large uh, particles, large suspended solids. So why why we are talking about tubular membranes in juice industry? And it's very uh, very uh, simple answer because the construction of tubular membranes is very robust. It means that that uh, is allowing uh, to handle feed streams containing suspended solids, fibers, and on the, uh, and uh, any other uh, uh, contamination without uh, without blocking. So the blocking is limited. Uh, it's, it's allowing to work on on a, a, a medium which is high viscosity uh, with, and also high suspended solids. Uh, so tubular membranes are providing the low turbidity of juice uh, with very reasonable uh, cost of operation. So why why PCI why why we are using this membranes in in, uh, in in juice industry? It's very very easy because the most expensive in operation are evaporators. The operation of evaporators is critical to get the higher concentrated juice. So membranes are able to handle different type of juices. Uh, can also increase the yield of of uh, with less manpower, uh, eliminate wastewater. Also can can can can provide a good quality of of, of juice and there and there will be a reduce of time and, and enzyme processing. So why PCI membranes then? There will be other question. So PCI membranes uh, provide special design of modules which allow you to to replace only the the core of the membrane. So the housing is made in stainless steel. Uh, but the core is made from uh, can can con, can can core can be only replaceable. But the other advantage is that is that we can provide the range of the membranes for different type of uh, juices. So basically, for apple juice and light colored juices, we are going with 200,000 Dalton membranes. And uh, for colored for pink colored juice, we are going with slightly open membranes, which has 4, 450,000 Daltons. And for most colored, high colored co uh, juices, including pomegranate juice, we are offering a 0 0.2 micron uh, membranes, which is which is unique on the market because the suitable membranes for different type of uh, membranes give you the life uh, longer lifetime. From the perspective of you can see on, on this picture, also on the right side, we have also reverse osmosis membranes, which allow you to concentrate to uh, to get the co extract uh, of of your uh, vegetable and fruit fruit juice. So moving forward, uh, the unique situation uh, of PCI membranes is that our structure, our structure of the membranes is very robust. So our membranes uh, can handle higher pressure, a higher temperature. And the reason of that is showing on the on the left picture that you can see the top picture is from uh, another producer. And the membrane is is made uh, uh, uh, which showing you that there is overlapping gl glue wells. Uh, and, for, and, the, and, the, um, and, and the bricks, are, are, are, as also shown, it's, it's not typical structure when you use for, for building the well, uh, walls. Uh, for, for our membranes, which is on the bottom, that we have two wells with shift. In this case, we don't see any implosion of the membrane. So we have no issue with the, uh, with the, with the uh, operating in higher pressure that membrane can broke. So we don't have such issue in our installation. So this is, again, not only the right type of the membranes, but also unique uh, construction of the modules provide the benefits for for uh, for end user. Uh, and the another thing uh, is the, the the cost savings. So so we prefer to go with the stainless steel housings, as you can see over here, which is stay stay at your uh, at your, your ultra filtration plant. But we are repl removing, uh, we are replacing only the the core, which is which is the uh, cheaper version of uh, of uh, the, the cheapest version of um, uh, OPEX uh, for, for for each plant. Uh, as you can see over here, we have two type of modules. One is A19, the second one is A27. The difference is the membrane area per module. So A27 provide the, uh, the the the twice bigger membrane area than than uh, A19. And the advantage of our modules is that you can put this module to your plant. So there is no required any modification uh, instead of you need to check some some points. But the, literally there is no uh, major uh, re required uh, uh, changes in your plant, just only modules uh, and check the performance. Uh, and 
we have modules with three clamp and, and, and spigot uh, offtakes, so it's also unique that you can have two different type of offtakes uh, of per mail. So, so let's move right now to fruit juice clarification. So, so everyone knows uh, that that uh, that the, the market is huge, and also we, as a producer of the membranes, we can confirm that we we we, we can clarify it almost all the types of juices because we are doing in this day. So we can start from apple, peach, uh, pear, uh, through uh, papaya, uh, lemon, lime, uh, also oranges, ending on the pomegranate juice uh, and blackberries or grapes. So this is what we are doing. So basically, uh, uh, for us, uh, as a membrane supplier, we need to inform our clients that the most important part is the preparation of juice. So if you want to achieve higher performance of your plant, you need to be aware of that the conditions of the juice which you provide to, to the to the ultra filtration system should be the, the most optimal. So we are saying that the concentration should be between 9 and 12 bricks, pH between 2.5 to 4, and initial pulp not around 2%, not, not more. Also, we are saying that, that the filtration is helpful for you in the last stage of the production, because you can uh, increase the yield. Uh, we are talking about the concentrate. So, so basically, the right conditions of operation will provide you the higher flux, so higher production uh, in your ultrafiltration system, and also achieving the low turbidity of your juice. Uh, but this is not, not only what we are doing as a PCI membrane. We can also provide you a special uh, equipment to concentrate your juice. So, let me move to the next slide. So basically, typical production uh, of um, uh, of juice, uh, in, including uh, ultra. Uh, there is the last stage is ultra filtration and evaporator. Uh, in my case, uh, we can offer uh, reverse osmosis to concentrate uh, your, your your your clarified juice. So you can increase your uh, uh, sugar levels, your bricks from 12 to 24 bricks which allow your uh, evaporator uh, to be more uh, efficient uh, and, and have more capacity uh, for, for your juice. So, so this is something what uh, it should be considered. Um, the, the, the, the reverse osmosis um, um, is the, the future right now to, to, uh, the, the, to decrease the co operation cost uh, of your plant. OK, so system operation. This is something what, uh, what is very important, and, and we, as a supplier, we ask our clients uh, to provide the data. Why we are doing this? Because I will give you this example right now. So look, we, we will ask you about the what kind of juice you are doing. Is this a single juice or multiple juice? It's light colored, dark colored juice. What kind of turbidity you would like to achieve? What is the temperature? So answer from this first um, uh, slide will allow you uh, will allow us to select the right type of um, of, of the system and membrane. So we can go with uh, with two type of membranes, should be the, the ultra filtration or maybe reverse osmosis membranes. <clears throat> we can provide uh, the right uh, membranes uh, selection, which allow you to extend the lifetime of your membrane. And after that, we will ask another questions uh, because this is not the end. So we will ask you if this is your process is batched, top batched, or continuous process. Uh, do you know what is your uh, what is your uh, suspended solid? So what is your your pulp? Uh, uh, do you have press? Uh, another question there will be there: Do you use enzymes uh, to de depactinize and discharge your, your juice? Do you use some uh, cl clarification agents like uh, acti acti uh, activated carbon, or maybe you accelerate the filtration process with bentonite? So all these questions will allow us to select the right system, the right capacity. To make sure that there is no implosion, there is no blockage of the membranes, and the lifetime of the membranes is extended. So, so um, we prefer to ask questions to give you that. So we ask you to help us because we will help you uh, with the right operation of the system. So the best, the, the, the, the most critical for any operator is is the the failure. So what is the root of the of the failure? So from our perspective, the biggest problem is the short lifetime of the membranes but also reduction of the capacity. So it's hand in hand. So if you see the short life of the membranes, you will see also reduce of the capacity. So typical behavior of operators is that, OK, we need to back to the, to the original capacity. So let's do the aggressive cleaning. So this is standard and, and uh, yeah, it's working. 
but it's the the the the, the short uh, way to shorten the lifetime of the memory. So so this is a, a situation which we would like to avoid. Um, but this yeah it, it is uh, it is uh, very common uh, in, in practice. So so basically to help um, and, and you we need to better understand the clinic regimes. So we need to know this, uh, uh, but not only because we need to understand also the process. To, to find out why your membranes are falling so often, so why you are cleaning so often, why do you require so often cleaning? So basically, we will ask uh, again operation parameters, sequences, temperature, pressure. What is uh, what is the uh, uh, hydraulic length of, of your plant? Do you use enzymes? And uh, do you have special needs for for lime and lemons? And uh, do you see any any uh, uh, what is uh, what kind of uh, looks like your failure of the membrane? Uh, what is our pipes? Do we have any uh, anti-siphon val valves? And and and, and finally, uh, <clears throat> we truly believe that the right chemicals with the right pH, with the right, right temperature, is the key. So this is why I will allow right now the experts uh, of chemicals to to talk about uh, how they are seeing uh, their product uh, in juice industry, but not only. Uh, so Leif, up to you, and uh, please, uh, please give us uh, training about uh, chemical uh, chemicals and CIP processes. Thank you. You, you are muted, guys. Unmute yourself. Sorry. Sorry, uh, I will uh, thank you, Piotr. I will see if I can uh, move forward in the presentation now. Seems that uh, nothing happens. You should be left. I just uh, approved your request for the remote control. I have requested. Yeah, yeah, I just allowed it. You can click on the slide and then you can go to the next next slide by clicking on it. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. So let me first. Oh, sorry. Let me first introduce the, the aircraft speakers. From the right to the left, uh, we have first uh, Bursin Goskuna. Uh, Bursin is from Turkey and he works as an application manager for Turkey and Israel. Ralf Krak in the middle is from Germany. Uh, Ralf is corporate scientist and leader of the Center of Excellence for Global Membrane Cleaning, R&D. Ralf was already developing our first UltraSeal products back in the late 70s, so there's a great experience there. Myself, Ralf Knudsen, I'm Danish, um, and I work as a te technical excellent lead um, for Membranes Europe but also supporting global membrane projects and OEMs within membrane filtration. In total, we have more than 80 years of AgroLab experience and even more uh, years of membrane experience. So first, I want to give a short introduction to AgroLab. AgroLab is a uh, the global leader in water hygiene and energy technologies and services that helps to protect people and vital resources. Resources we all know there will be uh, even further demand on in the future. The water demand is expected to grow within 40% by 2030. A lot of our activities is with a focus on helping our customers to optimize their cleaning processes with the focus of, of saving water and energy, et cetera, et cetera. Slide. In a globalized world with increasing food safety demands, we offer a unique combination of innovation, technical and industry expertise and a world-class service to change operational efficiency, food safety and product quality. And a few numbers, we help to ensure that 42% of the global milk is supplied, supply is produced hygienically. We help to make 27% of the world's processed food safe. 
and we supply 600 plus apparel plant globally. And then a few numbers. Uh, we have an annual sales 15 billion uh, US dollars. We have 9,400 uh, patents. We have a global research and technology centers with eight centers around the globe. We are present in 170 plus countries. We have uh, more than 200 university and organizational partnerships. We have 120 global production plants. We have uh, 250 warehouses around the globe. And we are more than 49,000 global employees. Of these, uh, approximately 1,800 is scientists and more than 27,000 is sale and service reps. And now to the membrane parts. In this slide, you see different factors which need to be taken in consideration when we talk about membrane cleaning. Besides the four well-known elements in the center circle for CIP, chemical activity, mechanical effect, uh, time for reaction, and temperature, we also need to take other things in consideration, like plant design, plant hydraulics, membrane types, the soil compositions, um, things that also Piotr mentioned uh, before. Today, I will only talk about water quality, chemical resistance, and pH and temperature during cleaning. Water itself can block the membranes if it is of poor quality or have a high mineral content. Membrane uh, chemical resistance varies a lot and is normally combined with pH and temperature resistance. Approximately 99 to 95% of the cleaning solution is water. Water is a good solvent. It is critical that this water meets the standards set forth by the membrane manufacturers and equipment suppliers. Any impurities in the water can be filtered out during the CIP and the rinses and block the membrane surface rather than clean it. High levels of contaminants can lead to reduced chemical efficiency and it can damage or foul the membrane surface. Here is a, a slide showing some general uh, requirements for water quality for membrane uh, filtration. This can, of course, varies from membrane uh, manufacturer to membrane manufacturer and also from um, plant manufacturer to plant manufacturer, but, but it's, it covers pretty well the general demands. For iron and manganese, uh, for iron, we have uh, a requirement for, uh, that less than 0.02 ppm and manganese uh, less than 0.05 ppm. These elements can uh, cause fouling or negative reaction with oxidizers. Silicates, uh, we need less than 5 ppm. Silica silicate can cause irreversible fouling uh, clay in the water, potassium-based cleaners may help. Then uh, for the bacteriological uh, quality of the, the water, uh, we, we demand less than 1,000 uh, colony form units per milliliter and, and zero E. coli per milliliter. And this, of course, is source for biofouling uh, formation on the membranes. The average uh, chlorine content in water should be zero, and this uh, especially when we talk uh, about NF and RO membranes, uh, which have uh, no tolerance to, to chlorine. Um, so uh, the chlorine can chemically interact and, and damage the membrane. 
suspended soils uh, zero ppm. Uh, this uh, will, of course, uh, if there's suspended soil in the water, it will uh, cause fouling on the membranes. And hardness less than 50 ppm. Hardness can result in mineral participation. So membrane cleaning. Increasing temperature increases the reactivity of the process, including the cleaning and the um, can aid in the removal of certain soils. Um, membrane have a maximum temperature rotation off in combination with pH. We see organic membranes with maximum temperature limits from 35 up to 85 degrees. In this case, with the PCI A37 um, element uh, max operation temperature is 60 degrees. For organic membranes, the pH limitations vary from around 8.5 to 13, depending on the type of materials. Exceeding the temperature limitation can cause damages to the membrane surface so do not exceed the limitation and use calibrated pH meters uh, with temperature compensation when you measure pH. And important to point out, always adjust pH to uh, 10 to 10.5 before adding sodium hypochlorite to prevent membrane damages. And also do not exceed 200 ppm. Next slide here. So we have added two proposals for cleaning procedures. One uh, uh, with Ultrasil 69 New as the alkaline product. Ultrasil 69 New is a surfactant free. Uh, the product is buffered around pH 10.5 and will secure that pH limitations for the membrane is not exceeded. If there is a lot of acidic buffer capacity in the soil on the membranes, it might be difficult to get pH up uh, with Ultrasil 69 u So for that reason, we have also a procedure where we use Ultrasil 110 uh, as the alkaline product. Ultrasil 110 is a medium alkaline product, which is also containing surfactants to emulsify fat and oils. Let's, by, by using uh, the formulated alkaline products, we avoid poor raw caustic quality products. Furthermore, the risk of overdosing and exceeding the pH limitations is reduced. So let's take a closer look to the two procedures. If we start to the right side, you see the clean procedure with Ultrasil 69 u as the base alkaline product. After a pre-rinse, we start with the first alkaline uh, cleaning step using around 0.5% Ultrasil 69U, which is uh, recirculated for 20 minutes at 50 degrees. And again, do not exceed pH 10.5. Dosing of the chemistry normally takes place at temperatures around 35 to 45 degrees. This uh, is also to uh, have a safer margin to the pH uh, limitations, because if you add all the alkaline chemistry at cold temperatures, you will have a higher pH. So pH um, drops when uh, temperature increase. So for that reason, uh, we, we dose uh, normally close to the recirculation temperature. Then we have an intermediate rinse followed by the alkaline chlorine step. Here we start by adjusting the uh, pH to 10 to 10.5 with Ultrasil 69U, approximately 0.5 to 1%. After checking pH and we have reached the recirculation temperature at 50 degrees, we add the hypochlorine on until we have around 150 to 200 uh, ppm free chlorine. I want to point out uh, the importance of always adjust pH by adding alkaline product first before adding the chlorine uh, to avoid aggressive reaction by the chlorine 
to the membranes, the ceilings, or other materials in the membrane plant. After every 10 minutes, check PPM chlorine and adjust if PPM is below uh, 50. A good indicator for cleaning efficiency is if the PPM chlorine is stable at the end of the cleaning step. That gives an indication that uh, the chlorine alkaline step will not remove any more soils from the, from the membranes. After this uh, step, rinse probably so no residual chemistry is uh, not rinsed out of the plant. Once a week or when needed, uh, proceed with the final acid cleaning step using Ultrasil 75. Ultrasil 75 is a combination of nitric and phosphoric acid. Normally we use a concentration of 0.3% which will give a pH around 1.8 to 2.2 at 50 degrees, all depending on the water quality. After 30 minutes of recirculation, we rinse out with a final rinse step. As you see in the procedure, we recommend not to go higher than 150 ppm chlorine, even though the membrane limitation is a bit higher this to have a good safety margin. The cleaning procedure to the left with Ultrasil 110 is built up with similar cleaning steps as the Ultrasil 69 procedure. The only difference is the applied concentration of Ultrasil 110. Keep in mind that pH of 10.5 should never be exceeded, so the product product concentration is only a guideline and might need to be adjusted to the individual membrane plants to fit to local conditions. The, the cleaning procedure are always built to be within the specification for the membrane limitations. In this case, the PCI A series. For other membrane types and applications, uh, cleaning procedures are set up accordingly. And by this, I will now hand over to Ralf Kark. Thank you, Life, for guiding us through the membrane cleaning parts and continue to, to drive the slides, please, as, as discussed. I take now the easiest part of the presentation. I would say here you see the global map. The, the dots you see on the map are all the facility we have over the globe. And uh, what I would point out is the yellow stars that is our expert center with an in-depth knowledge of membrane cleaning as well as having pilot facilities that can run pilot plants also on on different types of membrane i today want to want to guide you through our facilities we have available in germany and where we could do also cleaning trials uh, with membranes coming from you in Turkey or from other places around Europe. If you go further on live, here you see our, that was one, one too fast. Here you see our possibilities of uh, doing nanofiltration and reverse osmosis membrane testing. Here is just a flat sheet equipment mentioned. On the left side, you see some, some tests we do on integrity with methylene blue. This color coding is giving an indication if the membrane is destroyed or not. That, of course, as said for non-infiltration reverse osmosis as a flat sheet membrane. On the next slide, you see our possibilities of microfiltration and ultrafiltration membrane testing. And on this equipment, we can test flat sheet membranes, of course, but also all type of different tubular membranes. You see it on the right side. We can test complete modules. We can take out single membranes out of a membrane system and test it on its own. And you, you may realize that all of the systems we have in our pilot facilities are not coming straight forward from one equipment supplier, 
but they are almost made tailor made so that we can apply it to the different shapes and sizes of membranes that exist in the market. So we are capable to run more or less all membrane types that are available in the market. And the next slide showed another combination of different types of membrane possibilities. This is a plan designed with different pumps that can run everything from microfiltration system with the small blue pump in the front up to reverse osmosis, spiral wound membranes, eight inch for seawater desalination, capable to run up to 60 bar. And on the, on the right hand, you see some membranes we received as troubleshooting cases, uh, some with, with a lot of butter fat on, other with uh, preferring out the spacer material. And that is typically the membranes we see in our facility. As long as everything is going well, we do not see anything. But what we get are the crazy types of foulants and scalings of membranes. And then we try to make a cleaning recommendation for troubleshooting. And most of the cases we can restore the membrane. If you look on this yellow one with the butter fat, that was not, we were not capable to restore that, but we could figure out together with the customer the root cause of the issue. And that is another good thing you can rely on working together with Ecola. And that I believe was it from my end and leading forward to pushing. Hello everyone. Alive, can you please continue to switch slides? I will let you know. Uh, I think from uh, from this point, uh, I will be continuing in uh, Turkish language since I'm a Turkish guy. This this was a former decision we discussed earl earlier. Uh, öncelikle kendimi tanıtayım. Uh, ben Burçin Coşkuner, uh, Ekolab Yiyecek İçecek bölümünde uygulama müdürü olarak görev yapıyorum. E, bu kısımda sizlere Ecolab'ın meyve suyu tesislerine yönelik çözümleri, Ecolab Türkiye Yiyecek İçecek Genel Organizasyonu e, ve membran operasyonlarına yönelik hizmetlerimiz hakkında kısaca bilgi vermeye çalışacağım. Ecolab olarak tüm tesislerde olduğu gibi e, meyve suyu işleyen tesislere yönelik de e, bütüncül bir servis yaklaşımı hedefliyoruz. Temizlik ve dezenfeksiyon ihtiyacı olan her alanda özel formülize edilmiş e, ürünlerimiz ile optimize programlar kullanarak çözümler sunmayı amaçlıyoruz. Ana başlıklar halinde ürünlerimiz ile e, hizmet sağlayabildiğimiz kategoriler e, membran proseslerine yönelik çözümlerin yanı sıra işletme proses suyu dezenfeksiyonu, meyve sebze yıkama, CIP ve COP temizlik dezenfeksiyon uygulamaları, personel hijyeni ve giriş hijyen bariyerleri uygulamalarını içeriyor. Aynı zamanda bu uygulamalar için gerekli olabilecek her türlü dozaj ve kontrol ekipmanı tedariği ve servisini de gerçekleştirebiliyoruz. Su prosesleri ile ilgili projelerde ise bünyemizde bulunan su uzmanımız Nalko ile işbirliği yapabiliyoruz. CLP yıkamalarına yönelik Ecolab'ın geliştirdiği 3D Trasar dijital takip sistemi, ve COP merkezi otomasyon sistemlerinin kurulumlarını gerçekleştirebiliyoruz. Tesislere yönelik genel hijyen denetimleri gerçekleştiriyoruz ve Ecolab çözümleri ile e, iyileştirilebilecek alanlara katkı sunmaya çalışıyoruz. Live, e, can you move to the next slide please? Of course. Ecolab Türkiye yiyecek ve içecek bölümü olarak 20 kişilik bir e ekibiz. İstanbul merkez olmak üzere, Türkiye'de batı ve doğu olmak üzere iki bölgeye ayrımız şekilde faaliyet gösteriyoruz. Her bölgenin sanayi yoğun bölgelerinde bulunan bölge yöneticilerimiz ile müşterilerimize hizmet sağlıyoruz. Ayrıca export ve agriculture yani kırmızı et ve kanatlı yetiştirme çiftliklerine yönelik e, bayi ve distribütörler üzerinden operasyonlarını yöneten e, iki kanalımız e, daha bulunuyor. E, next slide please, live.
Ürünlere ait e, kimya ve operasyon teknik desteğini Avrupa'daki uzmanlarımızdan alıyoruz. Yani Türkiye'deki e, yetkinliklerimize e, e, bakacak olursak e, yaptığımız, gerçekleştirdiğimiz e, auditler e, akabinde gerekli olan e, membran CIP programlarını oluşturabiliyoruz ve devreye alabiliyoruz. E, gerekli olması durumunda problem çözüm desteği verebiliyoruz ve müdahaleler gerçekleştirebiliyoruz. E, ömrünü tamamlamış e, membranları, membran otopsi konsepti adı altında yine Avrupa'daki merkezimize gönderebiliyoruz ve orada, orada fiziki ve kimyasal analizler için e, test ettirebiliyoruz. E, bu e, Filtrenin tıkanmasına yönelik problemleri bir daha karşılaşılmaması için e, yaptığımız bir şey. E ve e, bu e, testler sonucunda ortaya çıkan bulgulara yönelik de e, özel program desteği alabiliyoruz ve müşterilerimiz de bunları e, uygulayabiliyoruz. E, bir e, başka destek aldığımız Avrupa'dan e, e, nokta ise tabii ki inovasyonlar. E, Ecolab bünyesinde e, Avrupa'da devreye alınan yeni inovasyonlar hakkında Detaylı bilgileri yine e, Avrupa'dan alıyoruz ve Türkiye'ye implemente ediyoruz. Next slide please. E, hali hazırda Ecolab ürünlerini kullanarak Türkiye'de faaliyette bulunan e, birçok tip e, membran operasyonu mevcut. E, bunlar e, membran proseslerinin e, ana kategorileri olan e, mikro, ultra, nano ve e, reverse osmoz e, membran tiplerinin hepsini kapsamakta. E, membran kategorisi için Ecolab'ın membranlara özel geliştirdiği ultrasil ürün portföyümüzü kullanıyoruz. Ultrasil portföyümüzde membran yıkamaları için ihtiyaç duyulan tüm alkali, asit, enzim ve katkı e, ana kategorilerine yönelik ürünlerimiz mevcut. E, bunların yanı sıra Life'ın sunumunda da bahsettiği gibi e, dezenfeksiyon işlemleri için ayrıca ürünlerimiz de e, portföyümüzde bulunuyor. Proses doğası e, ve membran malzeme limitasyonlarını göz önünde bulundurarak ürünlerimiz ile e, optimum programı oluşturarak müşterilerimize hizmet vermeye amaçlıyoruz. E, benim de aktaracaklarım şimdilik bu kadar. Ee, soru cevap kısmında sorularınız olursa cevaplamaktan e, memnuniyet duyarım. Uh, that's all for my part. Uh, thank you very much. Deniz, I guess uh, I will uh, leave the world to you. Okay, I will stop. Thank you for everyone. E, herkese teşekkür ediyoruz bu değerli sunumlarından dolayı. E, şimdi soru cevap kısmına geçebiliriz. E, slaytların bir kaydını katılımcılara yollamayı planlıyoruz. Daha önceden de dediğim gibi katılımcıların varsa sorularını alabiliriz. E, birkaç sorum olacak for Piotr. E, my first question is Why should we use different membranes for pomegranate juice? And my second question is, what is typical life lifetime for ultrafiltration membranes in juice industry? Okay. Uh, Piotr, Sayın Piotr'dan, uh, nar gibi, nar, nar mevcut için farklı membranların ter tercih etmemiz gerektiğini sordum. İkincisi de, Meyve suyu sektöründe ultrafiltrasyon membranlarının tipik e, raf ömrü, ömürleri ne kadardır onu soruyorum. Kendisinden e, cevaplaması için sözü ona bırakıyorum. Here we go, Piotr. So, thank you for, for those questions. They are quite good, <gülüyor> I would say. And if you don't mind, Dennis, uh, and I'm not, uh, I don't know who asked this question, so I can answer from, from the second one. So. So, so we as a producer of the polymeric membranes, we are always saying that that membranes are uh, lifetime of the membranes are depends how we operate the membrane. 
So, so basically, we are saying that for apple juice, we should expect between four, six seasons of, of proceeding uh, juice. So for four to six seasons uh, of, of apple juice. But if we have uh, using the same type of membranes for different color, uh, for different color of membranes, for, for different color of juices, uh, then the lifetime will be shorter. Um, and so, so I would say that in these days, in in the in these conditions right now, is we are talking about three to four seasons of, of the lifetime of the membrane. Uh, and why I started with the second question, not the first one, is that that that uh, the pomegranate juice is very specific juice uh, and not only this pomegranate juice but but it's one of them uh, that that is making the membranes fouling very quickly uh, and it's very hard to recover the membrane so so so basically uh, pomegranate juice it should use very open membranes not not the typical for apple juice and so you can extend the lifetime of, of, of your own membranes. But usually you are using one type of membranes for different type of juices, including pomegranate juice. So pomegranate juice is making hour fouling because it's containing a lot of tannin, plus also the, the ions, which make the, the membrane surface uh, hard, to, uh, hard to operate. So it's building a layer on the membrane surface, which is uh, very difficult for chemicals to, to clean it. So, so I, I would say, uh, it's better and cheaper to have the right membranes for pomegranate juice than use the standard one. But but in but in reality, it requires additional system, so it costs more uh, for for clients. Uh, this is why uh, there is a comparison. So you are using standard membranes and with shorter lifetime of the membrane. Thank thank you for your answer. And uh, my second question to Mr. Leif. Uh, Look about, about uh, not exceeding pH 10.5. Does this apply for all membrane types and applications? Thank you for the question. Um, I, I talked a lot about uh, not exceeding pH 10.5, and, and this is uh, related to the PCI A series, where, where we have these uh, pH uh, limitations. Uh, in, in general, I would say when we use organic uh, membranes uh, which are uh, chlorine resistant, we always carry out the chlorine uh, cleaning procedure at a pH around 10.5 and, and for some other type of membranes, uh, 10.5 to 11 um, to uh, have uh, prevent the, the chlorine to be aggressive um, to the materials uh, in the membranes and the membrane plant. Uh, if we if we talk about uh, other type of membranes and applications, uh, we have uh, organic membranes with uh, with pH limits up to uh, 13. So uh, there we can use a much uh, harder uh, cleaning, and we will typically also use some um, other ultra seal products with a higher alkalinity for these types of uh, membranes. If we talk about uh, ceramic membranes, uh, they are much more tolerant. Uh, there we can clean uh, at a pH up to 14 uh, without uh, damaging the membranes and, and go up to, to higher temperature, typically a cleaning temperature around 80 degrees. So it varies a lot from membrane type to membrane type. But uh, what I talked about today was uh, the specific uh, PCI a series membranes. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your answer. Um, is there anything else? So, so far, so that's my list. Er, so, yoksa, o da son anda biliriz. So, I think yeah then if there is no more questions so so I would suggest to contact you or us direct uh, for advice uh, so uh, now now we are the right people uh, to talk uh, and uh, we would like to cooperate together and to make uh, all the plants uh, running properly with the right usage of chemicals to to save the opex cost so this is our uh, message from this meeting uh, to save opex cost of all operation plants so we are willing to to work together we willing to to check and uh, help our clients
Thank you. Good. We, we hope uh, to keep going with this uh, of education online. So we are losing you, Dennis. So we cannot hear you very well. My connection. Thank you, uh, for everybody. So, so Pursin, can I ask you to to say in Turkish language to thank you to everyone uh, because we are using Dennis, okay? Yeah. If you don't mind. Uh, of course. Herkese çok teşekkür ederiz zamanınız için, bizi dinlediğiniz için. Umarız sahada da tekrar karşılaşmak üzere. Hoşçakalın. Herkese teşekkür ederim. Katılımından dolayı. Katılımınız için de. Thank you and have a great day. And uh, one more time, appreciate it for your attendance. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.